Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this new discovery of what seems to be an actual official record where we now know that someone out there was once unfortunately killed by a meteorite. Today we're going to talk about this discovery and also a few other discoveries from the last few years and welcome to What The Man. Now you might have seen this map before, um, this is essentially the map that NASA created of all of the known so-called bolide events from the past 20 years or so. Bolides are usually these uh, relatively small but also not too small rocks that enter the atmosphere and explode in the atmosphere, creating a somewhat visible event. The most famous such event was of course the 2013 Chilebinks meteor that exploded with so much power that essentially it kind of caused a lot of destruction around the city and even resulted in uh, minor injuries. But the thing is that obviously it did not kill anyone. We also have the much older Tunguska event, also from Siberia, that back in 1908 ended up creating so much destruction that several hundred people had to be hospitalized when a rock roughly around 65 meters in size exploded in the atmosphere. And just for comparison, this right here is the Chilebnik meteor. This is a much smaller rock that didn't actually create as much destruction. And we have a few other really interesting events that happened in the last hundred or so years. All of them were, uh, to some extent, somewhat unpredictable and somewhat random. For example, this is probably the most famous meteorite in the US. This is the so-called Silakauga or Hodges meteorite that it basically became famous back in 1954 when it went through a roof of a house and injured this wonderful lady and Hodges. Essentially, this was one of the first accounts of someone getting seriously injured by a meteorite and completely by accident. And the scientists even identified where this particular rock probably came from. It's this much larger parent body known as Asteroid Toro. This is a rock that's about 2 miles or about 3.5 kilometers in diameter and it was discovered back in 1948. It's uh, orbiting Earth every 1.6 years and it looks like a piece of it came off and decided to land on our planet and, well, hit and Hodges. But there were a few more less documented cases, specifically one from 1992 in Africa where a Ugandan boy may have been hit by a smaller 3 gram rock that's only about this big and another one from India in 2016, but none of these are thoroughly verified. As a matter of fact, there is very little evidence to suggest if this was actually true or not. But when you really think about it, considering how many collisions our planet gets every single day, you would really expect this to happen much more frequently. Here's actually a map that you can also find in the description below that someone made where all of the confirmed meteorite collisions or meteorite uh, discoveries are basically um, kind of added to the map where you can really kind of get a grasp of how many collisions happened on our planet and were actually confirmed in the past, I guess, 100 or so years. But what is it that we just discovered? Well, we discovered the official confirmation of someone actually getting killed by a meteorite, although not anytime recently. This was from August of 1888. So basically over 130 years ago. But what makes this study very interesting and also this particular discovery really unique is that it's an official government document kind of making it absolutely official that this is exactly what happened. So basically back in 1888, somewhere in the region right here in the area known as Kurdistan, there was potentially a bolide, a relatively large explosion in the air that created a tremendous amount of different tiny pieces of rock suddenly falling to the ground. There were actually quite a lot of cases like this recorded in history and some of them were quite deadly as, as a matter of fact, but this one is the more recent one and recorded in actual uh, government papers. Now this wasn't actually a collision of like the one you're about to see, so this was very likely a bolide because what was reported in those papers is that it was indeed a streak of light followed by a very large explosion and an extremely bright light resulting in about 10 minutes of different rocks falling to the ground. It was even reported as a kind of a rock rain that lasted for about 10 minutes that resulted in one of the uh, people under this rain being paralyzed and another one being, well, essentially killed. It also resulted in a major damage to all of the crops in the area and several different pieces of meteorite were discovered around the village where this occurred. But I guess the question is why is it that we're only learning about this now? Why today? 
Well, it so happens that it's actually related to the language this was written in. The language used here is what's known as a kind of an old Ottoman Turkish language that's very difficult to read and it had to be first translated to modern Turkish and then to English. And following the translation, the scientists realized that it was actually talking about an actual collision from a meteorite that resulted in a lot of damage to the property. But that tiny village of a few thousand people today is a booming city of about close to a million people located in northwest Iraq. And it's also very likely that most people living there today have no idea this even happened. Nevertheless, it's a pretty interesting piece of history and a really interesting way for us to uh, try to analyze how many collisions actually do happen on the planet and how many of them result in fatal accidents. Now, events like this do happen um, roughly around every few decades. So it's quite likely that within the next few decades, somewhere around the planet, there's going to be another major bolloid event that might become quite dangerous and possibly result in more fatalities. Hopefully by then we can predict them quite well and also prevent this from happening. And one of the reasons why more similar events don't happen more frequently, like for example from these small meteorites that enter Earth pretty much every second, is actually because most of them are really tiny and most of them end up on our roofs or bouncing off the buildings we live in. So we're kind of well protected from smaller rocks. But the larger ones, the so-called bolides that do explode in the atmosphere and can cause a lot of damage, usually happen over oceans simply because most of our planet is oceans, it's water. And this map right here does show you where they occurred in the last 20 years. So right now it's all kind of a matter of chance where this event happens and when it happens as well. Hopefully by then we'll be ready and we'll be able to prevent it. But until we discover more similar events or until we uncover some other unusual collision that happened in the past, that's pretty much it. And in one of the future videos I'm also going to be talking about one of the major bolide events that occurred a few hundred years ago that actually did destroy a lot of property and did result in a lot of casualties. But I'm not going to spoil it just yet. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.